Today we're doing section 6.3, anti-differentiation by parts. Suppose we have a function y equals uv, where u and v are differentiable functions of x. Now, when I differentiate both sides of this function, I'd get dy equals u dv plus v du, which is the product rule. And to go backwards to integrate it to get back to the original function, I would take the integral of each part, and the antiderivative of dy would be y, but the antiderivative of u dv is with respect to v, and v du is with respect to u, so you can't just take the antiderivative of that. What you can do is you can rearrange this so that you have u dv equals y minus v du. So I'm rearranging this, and then we know that y is uv, so here I have uv minus the integral of v du, so I substitute in for y, and this is the formula for the integration by parts, which is the product rule for integration, because since we took the derivative using the product rule here, this would be the rule that we would use to integrate to get back to the product rule. And that does have to be memorized. So integration by parts formula, the product rule for integration. So we have our function um, u dv, and that would equal uv minus v du. So you're going to have to decide what u is and what dv is. u differentiates to zero usually. And dv is usually easy to integrate. And this is known as the product rule for integration. You're going to choose u in this order. So if you can memorize the acronym LIPIT, so you would choose u if there's a logarithm, you choose logs first, then inverse trig functions, polynomials, exponential, then trig functions. Let's look at example one. We need to evaluate the antiderivative of x sine x dx. So here, we're going to use our formula for um, our integration by parts formula. So I'm going to first write that down. We have u dv equals uv minus v du. If you write it down every time, you will have it memorized. So we want to look to see what we want u to be. And u is going to be x because a polynomial comes before a trig function. So u equals x. Then I take the derivative of u and I get dx. dv would be what we had left. If x was u, dv would be sine x dx. Which v, taking the antiderivative of sine x dx, would be negative cosine x. So now using my formula, u dv, which would be x sine x dx, this would equal uv, so I'd look at u, which is x, times v, which is negative cosine x, minus the antiderivative of v, which is negative cosine x, times du, which is dx. Simplifying this, I get negative x cosine x minus a negative integral becomes plus cosine x dx. And then from here, I can take the antiderivative of cosine x. So I had negative x cosine x plus the antiderivative of cosine x is sine x plus c. Let's look at example two. Find the antiderivative of the natural log of x. So again, we're going to want to write down our formula. u dv equals uv minus v du. So here, u is going to be the natural log of x, which means du is 1 over x. Therefore, dv is going to equal dx. So v 
would be x because the antiderivative of 1 is x. So using my formula, the natural log of x dx would equal uv, u is the natural log of x, v is x minus v, which is x, and du is the 1 over x dx. We forget the dx here. This would then just be x times the natural log of x minus the antiderivative of dx, or x natural log of x minus x plus c when I take the antiderivative of dx. Some functions that you might want to remember when it comes to antiderivatives are exponential and logarithmic functions, which we went over already. The antiderivative of eu is eu plus c. a to the u is a to the u over the natural log of a plus c. The natural log of u would be u, the natural log of u minus u plus c. And our log a base a of u would be u natural log of u minus u all over the natural log of a plus c. So these are some ones to remember when we're using this. Let's look at our first quick quiz. So go ahead and try to find the antiderivative using integration by parts for x e to the 2x. Pause the video and go ahead and do this. The answer to this one was A. If you have a question about how to do this one, please ask in class or during check-ins. I will tell you that U was X, DU is DX, DV was E to the 2X DX, V was 1 half E to the 2X. Example three, repeated use of integration by parts. Evaluate the antiderivative of two x squared e to the x dx. So with this one, my u would equal two x squared. My du would be four x dx. dv would be e to the x dx. v would be e to the x. So using my formula, u dv equals uv minus v du. So I'd have 2x squared e to the x dx equals u times v, so that would be 2x squared times e to the x minus um, v du, which would be 4x e to the x dx and 4x e to the x dx, we would have to use integration by parts again for this one, because we have e to the x. So for this one here, my u would equal 4x, my du would be 4dx, my dv would be e to the x dx, my v would be e to the x. So now I have 2x squared e to the x minus, I would use my integration by parts again formula for this part. So my u would be 4x, my v would be times e to the x minus v du, which would be e to the x, du would be times 4 dx. And now I can take the antiderivative of that. And my final answer would be 2x squared e to the x minus 4x e to the x plus 4 e to the x plus c. And this would be because we would have 
parentheses around this. So this plus would be because this negative is distributed. So don't forget those parentheses because that's a common error that people make. Then if you want, you can notice that e to the x is common in all these and um, a two actually. So we could factor out a two e to the x and have x squared minus two x plus two plus c as our final answer. Let's look at a shortcut for tabular integration. So this is when we have our function, an integral of f of x times g of x dx. Usually f of x differentiates to zero in several steps. So it's usually a polynomial. And um, g of x usually integrates repeatedly. So like e to the x cosine x sine x, something that goes back and forth. So let's use the tabular integration method with um, the antiderivative of 2x squared e to the x dx. So when we do this, we're going to have a u in dv. So u is going to be what you differentiate, so what differentiates to 0, and dv is going to be what you integrate. So you're going to make a table. So I'm going to have u on one side and dv on the other side. My 2x squared is my polynomial, and e to the x continues to integrate to e to the x. So I take the derivative of u until I get 0. So the derivative of 2x squared is 4x. The derivative of 4x is 4. The derivative of 4 is 0. Then the, um, the antiderivative of e to the x is e to the x. The antiderivative of e to the x is e to the x. And same, the antiderivative of e to the x is e to the x. Then to complete the table, these two would be multiplied together and then have be positive. These two would be multiplied together and be negative. These two would be multiplied together and would be positive. So my answer to this would be 2x squared e to the x minus 4x e to the x plus 4 e to the x plus c, and you're done. So the tabular method is only used when you have a polynomial that differentiates to 0 and another function that repeatedly integrates. Remember down this side, you take the derivative, and this side, you integrate going down. So go ahead and use the tabular method to integrate x squared cosine 2x. Pause the video and do that now. With this, your answer should have been b. If you have questions on how to do this one, please ask during class or during check-ins, and I will go over this one with you. Now we're going to look at example five, solving for an unknown integral. We're going to evaluate e to the x sine x. We're going to take the antiderivative of that. So we have two functions here. One of them is not a polynomial. So we need to use Lippitz to decide is e to the x going to be u or sine x going to be u. So first I'm going to write down my formula. u dv equals uv minus VDU and then using Lippitz exponential becomes before trig so U is going to be E to the X DU is going to be E to the X DX which means DV would equal sine X DX which would make V negative cosine X so using my formula, e to the x sine x dx is going to equal uv, which is negative e to the x cosine x minus v du. 
So that minus a negative would become plus cosine x for my v. Um, du would be e to the x dx. So this part here, we would have to use integration by parts again. So with this one, my u would be e to the x again. Du would be e to the x dx. My dv would be cosine x dx. My v would be sine x. I haven't done anything with negative e to the x cosine x. This would then become plus uv with my new u and v. So e to the x sine x um, minus v du. V is sine x du is e to the x dx. So e to the x sine x dx. And I notice here that this right here is the same as this. So I can actually add this to the other side. Because if I brought this down, I go ahead and I add this to both sides, I would get 2 e to the x sine x dx equals negative e to the x cosine x plus e to the x sine x. Divide both sides. And I also notice that this is the same as my original problem. I would go ahead and divide both sides by 2. I get the antiderivative of e to the x sine x dx equals negative e to the x cosine x plus e to the x sine x all over 2 and then plus c.